It's Wednesday, August 24th. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Denise Douglas. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, two more victims of the fire and explosion at the Silver Spring apartment complex have been identified. They were the youngest two. Fernando Josue Hernandez Orellana was three years old and Dubai David Samir Yanez Morales was eight. We recently spoke with Morales' mother as she showed pictures of him on her cell phone. She also described what kind of child he was. David Lainez tenía ocho años, era muy lindo conmigo, él estaba bien cariñoso conmigo, siempre decía que yo lo dejaba muy lindo cuando lo peinaba y muchas cosas decía él. Okay, and in terms of a translation, Morales says her son was sweet and caring and would like always when she combed his hair. The three other victims last week identified were Maria Castellón Martinez, Augusto Jimenez Sr., and Saúl Panagua. Investigators are still working to identify two remaining bodies. Bowie residents recently got the chance to speak directly with police officials. Uh, some of the issues discussed included police brutality and diversity training. CTV Sonia Srivastava has more. Chief John Nesky and his command staff were all ears after calling a voluntary community meeting. Nesky admits national events such as the Freddie Gray shooting and the ambush of officers in Dallas and Baton Rouge prompted the gathering. A diverse group of residents had a lot on their mind, including police brutality. I have a son who's 14, his best friend's 14. They were just standing back there. When they get stopped, when they get pulled over on a traffic stop, it's going to, that's too late. That's not the time where they need to learn what to do. Respect. Um, like when the person cracked the window a half an inch when I'm trying to talk to him, because I'm going to explain to him why I stopped him, because I have three young males also, um, college age. My oldest is, what, 28. I got the youngest at 19. So I understand your view on it, but you got to also understand, too, um, the res this respect factor. They have to play both ways. One of the things, especially when I started, which was a while ago, <laughs> we didn't tell anybody anything. Come here. Why? Because I said so. Okay? That was it. Okay? That's not a good way to do it. As the discussion progressed, it was definitely clear that there was a generational gap in the way people view the police. Pretty much so you have to have as less contact with police as possible. Sure. So just hurry up and fly, get out of there. The culture of policing is racist. It just is. And the, the fact of that is that we have to have the talk. I don't hear white people saying, you know, we got to talk to my son about cop police brutality. It's black people that we're talking. If I go into a situation and I'm stopped by the police for whatever reason, and I'm confrontational, do you know who I am? Do you know what college I went to? Uh, you know, whatever the case may be. Sometimes that creates unnecessary uh, adversity that doesn't necessarily have to be there. Although there were no concrete solutions that came out of the meeting, it certainly was an eye-opener for both sides. And as the city grows and becomes more diverse, an open dialogue is perhaps the best start. In Bowie, Sonia Shervasva for CTV News. And Nesky says by the end of the year, all officers in Bowie will be equipped with body cameras. The proposed Prince George's Regional Hospital is back in the headlines. Maryland Senate President Mike Miller wrote a letter calling on Prince George's elected officials to band together in another push to build a facility. The correspondence is in response to a recent newspaper column written by a Republican activist who is calling for a cardiac surgery program at Anne Arundel Medical Center. Miller says that project would compete with the proposed Prince George's Center and is calling on Prince George's officials to fight it. A Republican activist is fighting for term limits on the November ballot. Robin Flicker has collected enough signatures to place a proposal for the limit, it limits in Montgomery County. Now, residents will be asked if the county executive and county council members uh, should be limited to three terms. The petition received more than 10,000 signatures. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Denise Douglas. Up